So we're going to start with rehabilitation. Uh, so rehabilitation, um, it's effectively a temporary payment plan. Uh, the borrower uh, is required to make nine on-time monthly payments uh, in a nine to ten month uh, period. Um, so I say nine or ten months. The reason is because for Perkins Loans Rehabilitation, it has to be nine consecutive monthly payments for all other federal student loan rehab programs, um, it's nine on-time payments in a 10-month period. So technically, it allows the borrower to miss a payment uh, and still be on track, um, but I try to make sure that the borrower makes nine consecutive timely monthly payments um, just to avoid any possible hassle. Um, so that's how the program works in a nutshell. Uh, the payments themselves have to be, at least for non-Perkins loans rehabs, um, they have to be what's called reasonable and affordable. Um, that's not just some random term that's prescribed by federal regulation. Uh, reasonable and affordable payments for the borrower. So how do we get that? So it used to be that the borrower, uh, in order to get a reasonable and affordable payment, the borrower had to go through a very cumbersome financial review, outlining their household income, their expenses, do supporting documentation, um, a, bit of a, a bit of a process. Um, that's no longer necessarily the case. Um, new regulations that came out a couple of years ago allow uh, the federal lenders and their contracted debt collection agencies to use um, a formula, um, effectively the IBR formula, to calculate um, a presumptive reasonable and affordable payment. So the borrower, the borrower's IBR payment um, would 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 be presumptively reasonable and affordable. Um, so that's really helpful for borrowers, uh, for many borrowers at least, who. That way they don't have to go through the process of doing a full financial review. They just essentially are getting on the IBR plan. It's not the IBR plan, though. Just keep that in mind. They're in default. It's just the IBR formula is used to calculate their payment. Also keep in mind that um, that even if the borrower is eligible for one of the better plans, like pay as you earn or revised pay as you earn, it's still the IBR formula that's used to calculate a presumptive, reasonable, and affordable payment. Now, that being said, if the 15% formula still doesn't work for the borrower and the borrower can't afford that payment, they can request uh, a full financial review and go through that process to get uh, a lower payment. Um, I find that this works um, more so for borrowers who are experiencing some sort of hardship or they have other expenses that the IBR formula doesn't take into account. Uh, the caveat here, uh, or there's a couple caveats I should say. Number one is that unlike IBR, which allows borrowers to make payments as low as zero, for rehabilitation, payments cannot be lower than $5. That's the minimum monthly payment under rehab program. Also, for borrowers who are doing the financial review method of getting a, a reduced monthly payment, they need to be made aware, they need to be counseled that once they get their loans out of default and back in good standing, they're not going to have the same option to go through a financial review to get a uniquely tailored monthly payment. Their options are going to be those income-driven plans. Now, again, for a borrower who, let's say, uh, is eligible for the revised pay-as-you-earn plan or the pay-as-you-earn plan, uh, but they have to use the 15% IBR formula for a rehab payment, Maybe that's okay. You know, maybe we do, you know, the household review to get them the lowest possible payment um, under the formula, um, or I'm sorry, under under rehab, uh, and then when they're back in good standing, we get them on repay or pay, um, and they're okay. But they need to be counseled um, that uh, they're not going to be able to do a household financial review for long-term repayment of their loans. 